In this lesson, we will cover one of the more daunting aspects of the quantitative reasoning section for many GMAT focus edition test takers, and that's going to be abstract functions and symbols. So let's first begin by defining the basic notation for functions. And you can see an example of that here on the screen. So what a function is, it simply dictates operations performed on a variable, meaning something that can change a value, and are simply read as f of x. So in this example, we'd have the f of x is equal to the expression x plus one divided by x. So whatever is plugged in as x then has to have one added to it and then be divided by itself. So the notation here, f of x, is the same as y equals within the coordinate plane. Now, there is no direct testing of plane nor coordinate geometry on the GMAT Focus Edition, wherein you would need to draw figures yourself. However, some theoretical concepts in geometry can be tested, such as domain and how functions would be represented in the coordinate plane as a tool for that representation. So something to know, but you will not have to ever draw the coordinate plane on this exam. And when you have what are known as nested functions, those are going to have to be processed from the innermost parentheses outwards. So that's because you have your PEMDAS or parentheses first order of operations, and you have to work from the inside parentheses outwards. So let's take a look at an example using this same structure, such as the f of f of 2. So we're going to plug in 2 as the value of x, and then whatever result we get from that first application of the function, we're going to plug back into the function to solve for the f of f of 2. So we start with the f of 2, which means we plug 2 in for the value of x. We add 2 to 1. So 3, divide that by 2, and get either 1.5 or 3 halves. And depending on how the problem is structured and what the answer choices are using as a non-integer format, you may want to consider it as either 1.5 or 3 halves. Then we have to take that 1.5 or 3 halves and plug it back into the function as our new x value. So we'd have 1.5 plus 1, or 2.5 divided by 1.5, which would give you 1.667 as a decimal format, or 5 thirds, because if you had 2.5 divided by 1.5, you could actually multiply the numerator and denominator as 2 over 2 or 1, and that would get you to your improper fraction of 5 thirds. Again, whatever format the answer choices are in should help to dictate what's most efficient for processing a function with non-integer values such as this. So then let's talk about the implications for functions. First is the idea of a domain. And a domain simply is going to outline the acceptable inputs producing real values for the function. So for the purposes of the GMAT, you do not need to worry about any values that cannot be represented on the number line. So a domain produces things that can be expressed on that number line with zero in the middle. And for this function, the domain is x cannot equal zero. It can equal absolutely anything else because if you divide by zero as the value of x, the result is actually infinity because zero can go into any value forever because it never takes away from that value. So a domain is just what are the acceptable inputs. And your primary domain constraints are going to be similar to the one we see here, which is that you cannot divide by zero or you cannot square root a value that is less than zero because if you try to take a square root of a negative, you get what is known as the imaginary number. And again, happily, the GMAT focus edition will not involve non-real values such as infinity, which is what the result is when you divide by zero, or imaginary values, which is the result when you square root a negative value. So now let's talk about another way that's, that functions can be executed on the exam, and that's basically by using a symbol instead of the standard function notation. So a GMAT symbol is going to present a unique arithmetic or algebraic operation, but they are not necessarily predefined rules of math. So they, you don't have to be looking at the problem and going, 
well, I don't remember what a weird carrot symbol means from my third grade or seventh grade or 10th grade math. It's actually being defined for you in the moment. So if it's unfamiliar, that's by intent. And it should be unfamiliar because it's about to be defined. So you just have to follow the format as the unfamiliar symbol is presented. And again, like I said, it's similar method to processing functions in just asking you to follow the directions. So strategically, the most important aspect for all unfamiliar symbol and unfamiliar function problems is going to be to remain calm. These questions are intended to shock and awe you into basically making a mistake. So the most important thing to do is recognize that whatever you have to accomplish through the symbol is right in front of you. So just remain calm to start. And that initial shock and awe may really be the most difficult part of the problem. The symbol function itself may or may not be predicated on the defined rules of mathematics. They're going to have to follow the rules of arithmetic and algebra, but they may not themselves be a predetermined rule that you're familiar with. And of course, you have to apply the rules of mathematics to the symbols as dictated by arithmetic or algebra, because we kill, still cannot uh, basically eschew the standard forms of arithmetic and algebra in processing the unfamiliar symbol. So we've got an example here. And we've got this interesting diamond cross symbol. So if that diamond cross represents a unique digit in the equation, five diamond cross diamond cross plus diamond cross diamond cross equals diamond three two. What is the value of the diamond? Okay, so first remain calm, right? We've got to make sure that we recognize all of the information we need is here. We've just got to parse it. So let's begin with what is known. And we know that 500 something plus another two digit integer is going to sum to a three digit integer that ends in 32. So that's what we know. And since the star is a unique digit, it cannot be five because you can't have it rep repeat over and over again in this structure. So the only possible hundreds digit, if you're adding a two digit value to 500 something is six, which means that that star digit must be a six. And it's going to be repeated a few times. And we confirm that by adding 566 to 66 and discovering that that's equal to 632. So that each of those diamond cross symbols are the same unique digit of six, and that would be the solution to this problem that probably looked a little strange to begin with, but by just remaining calm and working through the steps of the problem logically, you're able to get to what is ultimately a relatively straightforward answer. So step one for the symbols and function process, remain calm and set up your scratch pad for the problem. Carefully read and define the function or symbol as, prevent, as presented to inform your appropriate problem solving approach as well. Because, of course, all four of our problem solving tactics, a technical approach, logical evaluation or estimation, modeling and back solving are possibly viable for function and symbol problems. Our second step are, is going to be to carefully apply the function or symbol as required by the problem. You will want to use an example to illustrate the function or symbol if it's not provided and largely if it's needed. And most of the time it will be if you're being asked about some sort of abstract operation. And you'll want to consider the logical implications of the function or symbol as defined before you start just simply calculating or processing the information as well. Our third step is going to be to consider the best approach for solving. So take the technical or logical path to solving if you can, because that's probably most direct. But you may have an opportunity to plug in the choices or just easy values as a way to model the circumstances of the function or symbol to reach the sought solution that the problem is asking about. So now that we've talked basics of functions and symbols, these abstract operations that you may be asked about in the quantitative reasoning section, let's head on over to the whiteboard and see how you'll want to execute your scratch paper and potentially work through a couple of different ways to solve one of these unique questions you'll see on the GMAT focus quantitative reasoning section. As always, we'll set up our scratch work first, giving the answer choices A through E, and we're being asked for the value of F of X squared. 
Now, I probably would not recommend writing out the little expressions to start, and instead we'll just go to the information that's provided. So the problem itself says f of x is equal to 1 minus x squared. Now, if you were confident in technically manipulating these types of expressions, you might be able to see that the f of x squared just means that we're going to have 1 minus x squared squared, which when we process that through allows us to get a result of 1 minus x to the fourth. And you can see this can be an under 60 second question, even if the function begins as something unfamiliar to you. However, if you're not confident in the technical approach, you can always do our modeling alternative here. So we're gonna just set up our scratch work. We got A, B, C, D, E, and we're going to set it up so that we wanna choose a value for X that isn't in the answer choices. So that means I'm probably going to stay away from one, two, and four. But I could just say X is equal to three as a really easy value. So we need to find out that x squared would be 9. So we want to show which of the following expresses the value of 1 minus x squared when 9 is our squared, but x was our original value of 3. So we'll start with our first choice. And so we have to work through our actual expression, which would be 1 minus 9 squared, which would be equal to 1 minus 81, which would give me a value of negative 80. And that's the target that our correct answer, starting with A, must match. So remember that when we're plugging in our value for x, our value for x is going to be 3 because then we're being asked for the value of the f of x squared and x squared was 9. So don't plug in 9, plug in 3. And so our first expression is 1 minus 3 to the 4th. And 3 to the 4th is going to be equal to 3 squared squared or 1 minus 81 which is gonna be equal to my negative 80, and that is our correct answer. Now, remember on the exam that you'll want to test all of the others, but I only need to test until it's clearly a match or not. And I can see choice B and choice C, they both have to be positives because all I'm doing is adding values, and I know that my X originally was positive, so these can be immediately eliminated without even really working through the stuff because we know that our answer is supposed to be negative 80 from the model and obviously one plus anything squared is going to be positive one plus something positive plus something positive is going to be positive so those are going to be out i probably can even see that for choice d we've got one minus two times three that's minus six but we've already established that three to the fourth is going to be 81. So that's going to be way too big because that's going to be greater than zero. So that's out. And then our last one, we've got one minus two X squared. So that's going to be one minus our X squared is now nine. Nine times two is 18. But even then, we're still adding 81 at the final term. So that's got to be greater than zero. And we can see that both modeling and the technical approach can get you the right answer. Don't feel that just because a technical approach isn't simple and apparent to you that you are completely lost on an individual problem, especially one that we know the exam is trying to shock and awe you with at the outset. So go ahead and practice your own function and symbol problem drill sets to improve at a category question that the exam believes to be easy or to be easier than you may initially think when you encounter them on the test.